Speaking of running the football, um, a running back. My friend RJ, uh, who who is part of Emerald City Hockey, um, brought it up this year because uh, it's the draft. And it was one year ago at the draft. I, I reacted a little poorly to the Kenneth Walker selection. I was like, "Why are you drafting a running back this highly?" Uh, I really was hoping Rashad Penny was going to bounce back, um, and I mean he did the year before. And then he got injured again this year. Now he's in Philly. Yeah. Travis Homer's gone. Uh, we can look at the Seahawks uh, depth chart at running back. You know, I know DJ Dallas is there, but he's never really sort of solidified his spot. He's always kind of been there. Um, so the Seahawks decide in the second round, they say, hey, we're going to go get a real Pete Carroll kind of guy. And they draft <laughs> Zach Charbonnet out of UCLA. I'm not trying to rhyme again. I am white. Um He's a hard physical runner, did transfer uh, for the, his last two years uh, at UCLA, did transfer from Michigan State. Um, yeah, I was a little bit of – it wasn't as bad as last year. There's a whole video of me going high-pitched voice and going, a running back? Uh, I, I am kind of okay with this. I mean, again, you look at this running back roster. Uh, the depth chart on the Seahawks website right now just lists DJ Dallas and Kenneth Walker III in addition to Charbonnet. Yeah. And mm. Kenny McIntosh, uh, both did guys being that. drafted. Uh, second team All American last year, really hard to argue against. First team All Pac 12. Uh, the numbers are good. Um, from what I was reading, though, physical guy. So, what does that sound like? Physical guy, physical running back, Seattle Seahawks. Of course, that makes sense. Um, but also can run, uh, can catch the football as well. And I really enjoy that. I mean, Kenneth Walker, we saw it a little bit, but. Um, guy that I really enjoyed as a running back to catch the football was CJ Procise. He didn't work out, but I like having you know that third option. Well, not necessarily third option, but that check down out of the backfield, or you get somebody involved. One of my favorite plays of all time um, is Marshawn Lynch catching a wheel route against the Packers in that a NFC Championship game. Marshawn didn't catch the ball that often, so it was kind of fun to see him do that. Um, Charbonnet running back again, very interesting. There was there were the big running backs that went early in Bijan Robinson to Atlanta, which was interesting. Um, and uh, Jameer Gibbs out of Alabama to Detroit, which sparked um, DeAndre Swift, who helped kill my fantasy team, uh, to where did he go? Did did he go to Philly. Philly? Yeah. So did he go to Philly? Um, that sparked that trade. So. Uh, I mean, it makes sense to me to get maybe a more solidified uh, backup to Walker, but I don't know. What do we think? What do we think of Zach Charbonnet? I'm I'm excited for him. I mean, seeing that we added a, a top wide receiver as our 20th pick, um, we need a pass blocker out there. Uh, we know that Kenneth Walker can't be, be out there every step of the way, so it's nice to be able to have the addition of somebody who can catch the ball and who can block for our, our quarterback. Yeah, so you mentioned Robinson, and um, Charbonnet actually had 124 blocks that he either broke or evaded, which was only second behind Robinson. So hmm. you could say that that's a pretty good stat behind the number one running back that got drafted. So um, definitely interesting. I did like what I saw from DJ Dallas last season in some games. Um, I think he's also, correct me if I'm wrong, um, good at being a pass rusher, but he averaged five yards when he was out there, which is, it's not bad. I mean, he had less time on the field than mm -hmm. K9 and K9 averaged, I think it was four, four and a half. So not terrible, but are we looking at Charbonnet as a third option or as a second option behind K9 here? Personally, I'm putting him behind Kenneth Walker, the third. I mean, like, like you mentioned, I think we look at this in preseason, right? Last year, uh, DJ Dallas had some fun games. He had some fun games. He's a great energy guy. If you follow him on social media, he's a great energy guy. He loves the Kraken, so that's fun. But, <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, Matt hit it on the head again here. Um, pass blocking, right? I, I think you maybe uh, – I, I, I could be wrong. I'm not too sure on DJ Dallas and pass pro. But Travis Homer was a big guy in pass protection for whatever mm -hmm. reason. I don't know why he was good in that. But now he's with – I believe it's Chicago. Um so to be ha have that option, maybe, you know, you get Kenneth Walker on first and second down. And then if Seattle needs to go pass on third, you get Charbonnet out there, get him to be a big meat, meat wall for Geno Smith. Um, 
is he with yeah chicago okay travis homer's with chicago it doesn't matter um so yeah personally i'm uh obviously they have to go through mini camp and training camp in the preseason games but i'm putting charbonnet that second i think it's just okay. another physical guy he's a physical guy he's not a big speed guy this is a pete carroll running back it is it is exactly what it's just so funny because uh i have to admit to you i i was at four o'clock before the first round i was like okay i'm gonna lay down i woke up and we were already on pick 20 i was like oh jackson smith and jigba who did we take now um I was awake though for the second round and I was like, again, a running back and you look into this guy, physical guy, not a lot of burst necessarily, but a physical runner passes patch protection. Well, can catch the football. This is, this is what I expect from seeing a Pete Carroll. I mean, you would think, if you think about the running backs that we've had in the Pete Carroll era, obviously Marshawn Lynch, Thomas Rawls, you know, uh, Mike Davis was a guy who was here for a while. It was a journeyman, you know, uh, Chris Carson, God bless him. Hope his next doing all right. Yes. These are all physical guys. I mean, they could all catch the football here and there, but it's hit. He slots to me as, as a Pete Carroll running back. So, uh, I definitely think he's going to be, um, a, a, a number two. I think he is. Do we have any disagreements on that? No, <laughs> no, I think okay. it's going to be an exciting yeah. duo though. Really? It's exciting. I mean, you know, maybe it's it's um, just in the blood because you. I've got oh wrong cart, wrong side. Went to Oday High School and we ran the football very heavily there. Miles Gaskin went to to Oday. You know, we had we had some good runners mm-hmm. of the football. Uh, UW has had some great runners of the football, including Miles Gaskin. The mm-hmm. Seattle Seahawks have never been a pass. You know, obviously look at Steve Largent, but even then. Kurt Warner, you know, the names go down. Franco Harris was here at one point at his and at the end of his career. Running the football has been in my blood. <laughs> so, like, it makes sense. It makes a ton of sense to me. And it's exciting, though. But, again, to your guys' point, continue to add to that offense side of the football. Obviously, the defense struggled a lot. But, mm-hmm. uh, oh, hi, Rod. There are a ton of things that mm-hmm. could have been improved offensively as well. The Seahawks offense did produce a lot. But I mean, you, you still can add. So I was happy with that. With that, after a little more examination, and after I, I halted myself from being mad at taking another running back.